What's up, Scoops? This one is a little bit of a roller coaster of emotion because it does start out sad. But it ends happy, so let's just get started. Little Mary Bell was born in 1957 in Scotswood, England. At the time, it was this, I don't want to say it was a ghetto necessarily, but the area that she grew up in was kind of filled with like abandoned buildings and kids just running rampant through the streets. Despite the fact that the area was crazy, it was still kind of pretty safe. However, as several people know, you can be born into the safest area in the world, but your own house could still be a horror show, as Mary Bell's house was. Was. Her mom was a prostitute and she was not well in the head just to begin with. From the time when Mary was four years old, if her mom's client decided that he wanted her instead of her mom, all she did was bump up the price and let him have her. And I wish I could say that this is the first time I'd ever heard of that. It's absolutely horrendous. It's completely insane. But a lot of women who have killed people have that exact same background. It just takes a mom or a dad who just doesn't care about them that much or just needs the money that badly or needs the drugs that badly or is just not well in the head. Like, you'd be surprised how many people have this as their childhood. And it's so sad. I also had a dad who was a criminal and he really wasn't around her a lot. And when he was there, he was kind of just like, oh, what are you? I don't want to talk to you. Get away. Like, he didn't really care about her at all. So she just kind of came up with this environment of just always being mad that this is her life, always being mad at the people around her, not really knowing how to expel it. So she expelled it in violence. She ended up choking two kids on the playground at school, shoved a kid off of a short ledge and he ended up getting a head injury. And two months after that, she ended up killing two young boys, one three-year-old boy and one four-year-old boy, just because she was angry and she needed to get that out. She got herself involved in both cases by saying she was actually a witness to both and that she'd seen a man with the first boy and an older boy with the second boy. What actually made the police believe that she was the one who killed them was because in the second interview she gave about the second boy, she mentioned that with this older boy he'd had a pair of scissors and she described the scissors perfectly, except for the fact that they never actually said anything about the scissors because they knew that this little boy had been like cut up a little bit by the scissors that had been uh, nearby on the ground where he was found but they never told anyone about that. So the fact that she could say there were a pair of scissors involved, they never found the boy and they started thinking this chick has been, you know, a little bit too involved in this. So they brought her and they questioned her. They were never actually able to get her to confess, but since they could tie her to the one murder because of the scissors, and they knew that the other murder had been committed by the same hand, they could tie her to that one too. So after they caught her in 1968 when she was 11 years old, the news of it exploded across the nation. Children are killing children. What do we do? The only explanation for this is that, you know, like what do the adults in her life do to her. Children are supposed to be innocent, so what happened to her to make her commit this action? Which people have always speculated is the reason why people are so angry about this case because of the simple fact that yes, she committed it, but her actions point more to the adults of the nation and the way that they're raising children than it does to her and children in general. However, this is where the story turns around for the better because of the fact that she was caught and convicted. She was not thrown in a jail for, with a bunch of adults. She was put into a group home for problem children. She was given a schedule and she was around people who cared, you know, where she was and how she was doing and whether or not she ate. They cared about her. They showed her the caring that she had never felt in her entire life and because of that she turned her entire life around. When she started doing well in school she started just like accepting the fact that like what happened to her as a child was not her fault. Her mom was just sick. Her dad was just not you know a good person. Forgive those people in your life for doing what they did to you. Just accept the fact that they were sick and they were not okay and she was able to move on because of that. She was actually put in jail for an indeterminate amount of time but they actually said was that her sentence was at the Queen's pleasure. So that basically means whenever someone along the case of her development, if someone felt like she was cured and she could be out in public, it was totally fine to let her go. So when she was 18, she moved from the group home into an actual prison, and it was that movement and her behavior therein that made people believe that she really could be released into public society and be okay. Because she was a model prisoner, she continued with her studies, she got a degree, she lived her life even though she was in prison. They released her when she was 23 in 1980. In 1984, she had a daughter. They gave her a brand new name and sent her somewhere where no one would recognize her face. And her daughter was granted anonymity as well, only up until her, until her 18th birthday. And seeing as Mary Bell and her daughter would move places and then someone would discover who they were and they had to move again, and then someone else would discover who they were and they had to move again. Till 2003, the courts finally granted her anonymity for life. And it was only last year that her daughter had a child as well. So that child is also being granted an anonymity for life. But despite the fact that those poor little boys died in 1968 and she grew up and turned her life around and is now this like, you know, part of society and she's living a life that you always hope that a young, smart, beautiful little girl will eventually live. People still feel like she shouldn't be allowed in society. She shouldn't be given anonymity. That she should be paying some sort of penance 
to the mothers of those children. In my opinion, I don't think that's true. She was given a really raw deal. And Mary Bell's mother, for several months after she went off to the group home, was giving interviews left and right to people and accepting all types of money to explain how she grew up. So everyone knew what situation she grew up in. I mean, I understand what the two mothers of those boys are saying. I couldn't possibly imagine the pain that they feel at having their boys taken from her just because she was really angry. Like, I get that. But I also understand that she's a completely different person. And the people who convicted her understood that as well. They knew that if she was given half a chance, she would be a completely different person. And they gave her that chance and she turned into that person. And I think she deserves to live now. What's your opinion? Should she still be in jail? She should be handing over money to them? Should she be allowed to be anonymous in England? What do you say? Put it in the comments below. I want to know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I didn't want to tell another like horrible story today. I just wanted to chill today and tell a story where for once the system didn't fail someone. So we're going on to more Criminal Minds stories starting tomorrow. Awesome? Awesome Blossom. I absolutely love you guys. My scoops are beautiful. Please remember to like and favorite and subscribe for this Criminal Minds awesomeness. And I will see you tomorrow.